joining us tonight in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank God for our Facebook viewers and all of you who may be watching us on YouTube. Amen. Hope you enjoyed the praise. Amen. That went forth. Amen. And hopefully now the Lord will use me to give you a word to help you and to encourage you in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Thank God for all of us who came to be here in our locality. God bless you. Amen. All of you in the support of this ministry in Jesus name. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, as you, I'm going to ask you to turn your Bibles to uh, the book of uh, 1 Peter chapter number 2. 1 Peter chapter number 2. Amen. Can we have that. Say amen. All right. Let's, let's you should be all that running around we'll sing it they want to run around with the time of the word praise the lord amen first peter chapter number two when you have this amen and i said verse nine praise the lord is where we are going to start amen tonight we're going to talk about peculiar people. Peculiar people. Amen. And what does that actually mean? Amen. What does that mean? Again, 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse number 9. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. The word peculiar, when you look it up in... On dictionary.com, that word means strange, odd, or unusual. Praise the Lord. Strange, odd, or unusual. Amen. And we know us as the people of God, we are an unusual people to the world. And the reason we're unusual is because we don't walk the way that the world walks. Praise the Lord. We don't talk the same way the world talks. I don't need y'all kids to calm down before we get you. All right? We're in Bible study, and there's no need for me to have to talk over y'all. Okay? Praise the Lord. Please calm down before we have a further conversation. Strange, odd, and unusual. To the world, we are an unusual people because we don't walk the same way the world walks. We've been delivered from the world, praise the Lord, and thank God for that. 
But now the people that we used to walk with and talk with and party with and hang out with, they well, there's a difference between the lifestyles that we live now. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so now they look at us as when they saw us as similar. We had similarities. Now our mindsets are different, praise the Lord, which now makes us unusual or odd, praise the Lord. When I was coming up in college and I, amen, started, I'm going to say uh, I was practicing the word of God by not fornicating, but as the world would call it, practicing celibacy, amen. As I was doing this, people started to think that I was funny. They thought that I was gay. Amen. Even my twin brother had people at his job that he used to work at a movie theater. And he would ask them, they would ask him, ooh, or they'd make comments, ooh, that girl over there, she she look nice. She she thick. She this, she that. Praise the Lord. And my brother showing them all like, man, go on here. I don't want to look at that. Well, what? You gay or something? No, I ain't gay. I just don't want to lust after somebody. Why? Because we are odd. We're un it's unusual for them to hear a young male to talk like that. Praise the Lord. That's the definition, amen, on dictionary.com, or if you Google it, praise the Lord, you'll find that the word peculiar means strange, odd, or unusual. As we get into the Hebrew and the Greek text, praise the Lord, of this word peculiar, it has a slight, this has a different meaning to it. Amen. What it means in the Hebrew, it means possession or property. Personal property. Acquired and carefully preserved. Elected. Praise the Lord. Elected. Property. Personal property that has been acquired. So now we look at that definition, besides us being odd and unusual, praise the Lord, the Bible is telling us that we are an elected people, a chosen people, and God has us as his property. Praise the Lord. There's a scripture that comes to mind, I believe it's 1 Corinthians, I believe it's chapter 6, where he says that, amen, we are bought with a price. Praise the Lord. I believe it's 1 Corinthians 6 and 20. It says we're bought with a price. Amen. The price that we're bought with is the precious blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And that blood has washed away all of our sins and given us the spirit of adoption. Praise the Lord. And now we have become God's property. We are God's elected ones. Praise the Lord. He's acquired us. We are the possession of God. Amen. And as the owner of a possession, you want to take care of it. Am I right about it? Amen. If you have a vehicle, you're the owner. You have possession of the vehicle. You take care of the vehicle, especially when it's new. You know, as we become four, five, six, ten years old, you start to think, ah, it's getting me from point A to point B. But when you first get that possession, you treat it. You wash it every other day. You even go get a car wash membership, praise God, because you want to keep it clean. Amen. You take all the trash out every couple of days and you put air fresheners in it, praise the Lord, because it's your possession and you want to take care of it, keep it looking clean and looking new. And that's what God does for us. He wants to keep us fresh. We are his possession and he takes care of us, praise the Lord. He even cleans us out like he does, like we do our cars, our vehicles. Praise the Lord. Peculiar people. Peculiar people. So now, in the Hebrew, that word that means that, that it's segula, it means possession, property, acquired and carefully preserved, elected. Praise the Lord. Then we get into the Greek, and that word now means abundance, plenteous. Surpassing value. Amen. Amen. Surpassing value. Thank you, Jesus. 
when we are peculiar people and we're owned by God, there's not a value you can put on us because his blood has purchased us and there's no price for blood. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. There's no price for the life that was laid down for us on Calvary. Praise the Lord. That's why we are peculiar people. We have a certain value about us that's more greater than rubies and, and gold and silver. Praise the Lord. But we have a treasure. We are a treasure. Praise the Lord. We're a treasure. Thank you, Jesus. Like a treasure box full of jewels and full of expensive items and, and gold. And you put a lock on it. Praise the Lord. We're the treasure of God, and he has put a lock on us. He sealed us. Praise the Lord. We're sealed by the Spirit of God. Peculiar. Peculiar. Praise the Lord. So not only are we odd and unusual, but we are the property of God, the possession of God, and we are surpassing value. There's no value to put on us. Praise the Lord. So I thank God that he has created salvation and given us this salvation so that we may be able to live holy and be able to show the world that this darkness is really not powerful, more powerful than the light of the gospel. Because we once walked in darkness and now we are saved because the gospel, the glorious light of the gospel has shined unto us. Hallelujah. It's good to be in the know. It's good to be in the know. That's one of the great things about management. A lot of people don't like management, praise the Lord. And, and, and some may say this is petty, but a lot of times you get in the know of certain things in the company when you're in management. You're in the know. You have knowledge about what's coming down the pipeline. Maybe things that you may not be able to share with your employees, but you're in the know. And I kind of look at the word of God. Praise the Lord. We're in the know because we know who Jesus Christ is. We're in the know because we have the revelation of salvation. Praise the Lord. They actually rhymed, didn't it? We have the revelation of salvation. Praise the Lord. We now understand that salvation is not accepting the Lord as your personal Savior and you say, that's not salvation. We have revelation now. We now understand that, oh, being a good person and just having a good heart, we can't mix that up as being saved. Praise the Lord. We have revelation now. We now understand that we must repent, be baptized in Jesus' name, and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit in order to be saved. And when you receive the Holy Spirit and receive this promise from God, you have now become peculiar. A peculiar people. Praise the Lord. First Peter chapter 2 and verse number 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into what? His marvelous light. Amen. This is why we're peculiar. Because God has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. That's something to shout about. That's something to be thankful about. That's something to give him praise for. Praise the Lord. Because he saw us fit to snatch us out of darkness. Praise the Lord. Amen. Verse 10, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God. Did I say peculiar means elected, chosen, a possession, acquired, right? Verse 10 says that in time past we were not a people. Amen. He said, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Thank God for mercy. Hallelujah. 
Thank God for mercy. Thank God for mercy, favor that we don't even deserve. Praise the Lord. If you look at your life, you know you don't deserve the favor of God. But thank God, he's called us out of darkness and to his marvelous light. Go to Titus chapter number two. Titus chapter number two. Hey Amen. When you have that, I want you to find verse number uh, verse number 11. Eleven through fifteen. Titus chapter number two, verse eleven through fifteen. All right. Hey, have a seat. Don't get up no more. Don't get up again. Titus chapter number two, and verse number eleven through fifteen. We have that. Say amen. The word reads, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. Praise the Lord. The grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. This is what the whole nation needs to hear. We need to deny ungodliness. We need to deny worldly lust. And we need to live after righteousness. Godly. In this present world. Praise the Lord. Verse 13. Looking for that blessed hope. And the glorious appearing of the great God. And our Savior Jesus Christ. Who gave himself. Look at verse 14. Who gave himself for us. That he might redeem us from all iniquity. And purify to himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. Amen. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. Amen. Let no man despise thee. Let no man despise. Don't let nobody look down upon you. Amen. And we will we'll find that to be the case when we start to live holy, when we start to live righteous. Amen. People don't like the lifestyle we live because we put what we call a monkey wrench in their life. Praise the Lord. We disrupt their life. Praise the Lord. Amen. They, 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 they smile in your face but talk about you behind your back. And you find out by other family members that certain family members are saying certain things to talk down upon you because of the lifestyle that you have chose to live and all you did was do what the word say you're denying ungodly and worldly lusts and when you do that and you have the power of the Holy Spirit you are peculiar you've been called out you're God's possession praise the Lord your God's possession. You have a value that surpasses the cost of anything that anybody could offer. This is why we can't sell out for money. Just like Judas. Judas sold out for money, didn't he? Judas sold out for money. And, and when he sold out for money, he betrayed Jesus. But then the guilt got to him. See, where he tried to go and send the money back to the people he sold Jesus out to. And they said, oh, that money is the price of blood. We can't have that. Judas threw down that money. And he went, and the Bible said he went and hanged himself. Praise the Lord. Found in the book of Matthew, I believe, chapter 27. He went and hanged himself. Praise the Lord. And then you go to the book of Acts, and it tells us what happened with Judas. The Bible says he fell headlong. And his insides burst out. Praise the Lord. May it sound like he failed, tried to hang himself and fell down and went headlong, head first, and burst. His guts burst out of him when he hit the ground. Find that in the book of Acts. Praise the Lord. But the guilt is what led him to the suicide. The guilt is what led him 
to 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 um, kill himself. Praise the Lord. The guilt. Guilt. A lot of people have thoughts, suicidal thoughts, because of guilt. Praise the Lord. They have guilt. They have other things going on, and the pressure gets too much. And instead of coming to God to relieve the pressure. Instead of coming to God and laying down all their cares before him, for he careth for us, they result to other actions. Praise the Lord. Mental health is real out here. It's real. Mental health is real. People are struggling mentally. And they need God to help them. And all they know to do is to go to a therapist, and a the therapist wants to chat with them and then uh, uh, some kind of uh, uh, practitioner or doctor or somebody want to prescribe them amen, a pill to help something mental which ultimately comes down to trouble in their heart trouble in their spirit praise the Lord they're struggling in their spirit they're struggling with peace praise the Lord when we have a God of peace, the Prince of Peace, when you can learn how to pray to him and give it to what I tell y'all the other day, I said, you got to, sometimes you got to pray and don't get up until you feel the release. That's giving it to God. It's easy to pray and say, well, Lord, you see what I'm going through? Take it and then go about your business. There's another thing to spend some quality time and pray and tell him the issues of your heart. Tell him what's going on. And you don't get up from off of your knees until you feel the release. You feel the weight has lifted. That's when you've given it to him. And when you feel that weight has lifted, you don't worry about it no more because God has taken it. You've laid it down at his feet. Amen. You are God's possession. Amen. Thank God for our Facebook viewers and our YouTube viewers. We are God's possession. Amen. Praise the Lord. We are his property. Amen. We're his property. We are elected. Thank you, Jesus. And he wants to take care and be there to attend to his property. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So remember this. We're peculiar. We are peculiar. Praise the Lord. We are, uh, to some people, unusual and odd because we don't run with it to their excessive riot anymore. Praise the Lord. Amen. I believe it says that in Peter. We're different. We used to do those things, but we don't do it no more. Amen. Why? Because of what Titus has written here or what Paul has written to Titus. Amen. But Paul is bringing out Amen. Two aspects of living here. We got to live with there's people who live in this evil world after the evil world. But then you have the people of God, the peculiar ones who are God's possession, who lives after, amen, the righteousness and the godliness of God. Praise the Lord. So if you want to be saved, amen, out there and broadcast land, Facebook, YouTube, wherever you may be watching this. In order to be saved, the Bible says in Acts chapter 2 and verse 38, in order to become peculiar, God's possession, to be owned by him, you must repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of sins, the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. If you are in the Kansas City metro area, I encourage you to come. look us up on our website, newransomejesuschurch.com. You'll find our address. If you want to support this ministry, you'll find out how to give to this ministry.